shop's basement. Hosted by John Kurt. Wow, welcome to Grim After Dark. What an amazing, beautifully edited and produced intro that we have for a very special episode this week. Uh, this week on Grim After Dark, all the format out the window. State of play, no. Uh, around the net, no, not even an eBay price is right this week. Because this week, um, for our third annual Christmas episode, we bring on Peter the Falcon, um, our favorite Falcon, to discuss his favorite holiday movies. Um, and this year, not only did we make him watch Die Hard 2, Dickie's going to force him to play Whose Grunt Is It Anyway, which is yeah. coming back as a special Christmas treat. Um, and again, if you enjoy what you see or what you listen to, at yeah, it is for Christmas. Buy, buy a loved one a present if you enjoy this. Uh, anyway, before we go on, let's meet the team who make this all possible every week. First up, he's the co-host for the Comos. He's our competitive 40K champion all the way from Moscow, Idaho. It's Danny McDevitt. And he's the beautiful face of everything Square-based, a fantasy enthusiast and a casual 40K enjoyer. It's Val Haffelfinger. <laughs> We're all afraid to talk. He's a man behind the curtain. <laughs> he puts so the couch in right Canada. Now. It soups our producer, Tag Priest Diggy. And he's the original inspiration for the Votan's ancestor cores, the man who can show his disappointment in you with a single shrug. It is, of course... Yippee Kaye, Mr. Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> Peter the Falcon. <laughs> oh, I do want to. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Hey. Uh, and no. he did. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Nick Horton for sending us that clip on YouTube of the uh, TV edit of Die Hard 2, which replaces the motherfucker with Mr. Falcon. Mr. Falcon, that's right. Mr. Falcon. <laughs> That's incredible. You is that where you got the Falcon. nickname from, Pete? Was that? Is that where you got the nickname from? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Peter, from where the... did you get your nickname? This is this is a nice Christmas treat for those who don't know you. I mean, I've told this story a lot, but okay. But you have. Um, I got the nickname uh, in a bar in downtown Dieppe, and not in France, the one near Moncton, um, at like, I don't know. One in the morning, my friends and I, after playing hours and hours of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, decided to get into an argument about if you could give yourself your own nickname. I said you could, as long as you were willing to put effort in. And I changed my name on Facebook to Peter Falcon Colosimo. Never said anything about why. Mm -hmm. And then eight years later, Pablo Martinez thought my name was actually Falcon. And it's uh, <laughs> sweet Pablo. So it just, it just okay. like the long game. It also helped that Facebook would not let me change my name back. No, no. Mark Zuckerberg, real serious about nicknames. He's it's pretty, it's pretty much just legal now. Yeah. Uh, to um, be uh, fair, the, the, the two people that host the show most of the time, John and Danny, also legitimately thought my middle name was Falcon. I remember <laughs> on Mob Rules hearing uh, the question of if it was pronounced Falcone. Um, yeah. Definitely <laughs> said that dead many. seriousness. Yeah. Dead serious. <laughs> that show was a very serious show. It was. Uh, yeah. It was of all the shows that I've listened to for 40k, yeah. it's the one where I got uh the most intimate knowledge of the game um and life in general. Yeah, yeah. we have a clip from that show as well. Oh really? No, I just have the soundboard. I just oh, want okay. to go back oh, okay. and real land. <laughs> You had okay. me for a second. I was like, what, what are we going to watch, man? That's too much. That's too much. Probably, I don't know. The, the shit's on the channel already. You can watch it out. But we brought you here not to talk about uh, uh, your your amazing 40K stats or your work with Goonhammer or your excitement for Old World. In fact, no one here wants to talk about Old World at all right now. What? Uh, so that's why we're super excited. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, 
Uh, this week is no comment of the week and is definitely not brought to you by our friends at Frontline Gaming. They're open 24-7 at FrontlineGaming.org. Uh, all of your Games Workshop product is available at 15% off, or better yet, buy it through their second-hand store. Um, but there's no comment of the week for them to sponsor, so ignore Some that. Some friends they are. Are they even our friends? Are they even our friends? Some Wait, commenters they are. Yeah, let's talk to our business manager about that. Hey, Val, I'm did you contact- not allowed to talk about the only person that I would say is like my friend there. Because the cease and desist. Don Johnson. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Meth monster. <laughs> <laughs> I I got to uh, send Seth a little like preview video today and be like, are you legally allowed to do this at LVO? And he was like, yeah, probably. Which is always a good sign. Yes. Was it him power bombing an eagle? Because I know he's done that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally his job. He's yeah. known for his eagle fighting abilities. Actually, yeah. he's yeah. he's it's been well documented. He's taken several talons to the face uh, yeah. and lived to tell the tale, and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, he it's is because of the cloaca inspections. He has. Yeah, it's true. It's the mastication. <laughs> he's a master of the cloacal kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Die Hard Two. Mm. Um, okay. Is <clears throat> actually a Christmas movie. Um, these are clips <laughs> I took from the film. Um, very, very appropriate here. Um, but yeah. yeah, two years after the event of Die Hard One, uh, the surprise success, uh, it's uh, John McClane going to Dulles International Airport in order to pick up his really shitty wife. Why is she a shitty wife? She keeps getting him in these situations, Val. <laughs> they just have a very poor relationship that is not based on communication. No. 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 Well, I mean, that might be true, but I'm not. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I'm probably going to blame the meathead cop. What? This was all caused by the guy who towed his mother in law's car at the start of the movie. <laughs> you say, like in a sliding doors moment, if the airport police no, didn't tow no, John no, mother in law's car. I'm saying? saying, I'm saying, if there's someone who's a bad communicator and potentially, you know, like. Uh, suffered a lot of head trauma and therefore perhaps prone to acts of violence. It's probably John McClane here, guys. Yeah, this, I mean that's true. It's not Holly. Okay, that's fair. But to Adam, be fair, Adam with yeah, I agree. I feel well. Nope. You know, it takes it takes two. It takes two. There are no police records. And look, she's abuse. not blameless in this. Value. No. You can't like be over here thinking she's some kind of saint. Look, you know? just basically, her problem is anytime she goes above the second story of anything. So yeah. she's mm-hmm. she's up up she in the air. Uh, <laughs> she's on a plane. A she has vertigo, like, and it's oh. undiagnosed. She refuses to have it diagnosed. I think that's the big problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? That would drive a wedge in my marriage too if my wife yeah. refused to get diagnosed for for that for I, vertigo. Yeah, that'd be tough. Chat coming in strong right now, uh, saying, "How much did that opening run, you guys? Five Canadian dollars." Mm-hmm. And I would say it ran me a wife and child being sick for a day, and me being bored. Ah, uh, well, Edgel, they well. did remarry, and it was a mistake. Uh, as yeah, we find out in all of the other diehards, when she is contractually not obligated to appear, uh, their yeah. marriage goes through just the ringer. Yeah, um, Falcon Until people Justin are Lawrence. say like guessing if you're drinking a Gatorade or crushing a forty. Um, I'm assuming it's Gatorade, but but if you want to tell the tell the tell the folks, me, yeah, what are you crushing? <laughs> Um, it's a, it's like a flaming mo. So I was it's like I was a flame, not exactly a flaming mo. Are you, well, well, how are you drinking? Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you drinking scissor? <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was told. Um, are you I was a rapper? To the show, like two weeks ago, and yeah. I said okay, but you have to keep reminding me. And mm-hmm. Dicky did a very good job of reminding me, like every couple of days, mm-hmm. uh, and including this morning. Um, and then I came down with a really bad fever. And so Ooh. I drank a whole bunch of cough syrup and then remembered I was supposed to do the show. Right. Um, so then I popped a couple of day quills and then got to even um, yourself out, even myself out. And, <laughs> um, and now I'm back with cough syrup and grape uh, Gatorade zero. Cause uh, nice. if anything's going to kill me of the things I just listed, it's going to be sugar. Yeah, and no if, uh, uh, and then when you're uh, ready to go to bed, just uh, pop a couple of quaaludes. And uh, it's, it's like the '80s all over again. That's basically the '80s. I'm I'm basically Brad Chester's uh, side table at night. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. 
I don't like you saying that right after he mentions Chester, Danny, but go on. Yeah, so, yeah, speaking of Chester, let's talk about the naked yoga scene. <laughs> well, I mean, that's right off the hop, so that's, that is hard to avoid. The hop. It is not yoga. It's a tai chi, tai chi. Uh, oh, that sorry, he does mistake. there. Um, I will say during my research for this episode, the William Sadler, the actor who played that guy, was not aware uh, that he would be naked during that scene until wardrobe oh. fittings. Uh, when he asked, well, what am I wearing during this? And they're like, nothing. They're like, And he asked for it to be filmed nearer the end of the shoot so he could work out. Mm. Well, he's, he's ripped. He's ripped for that. Maybe, my, my memory might be a little off, but like he may not be ripped by modern standards. But I remember him just being shredded. No, he's, uh, dude, no, he's jacked. Yeah. We yeah. were talking about it during the movie, and we, we actually, just to tell everyone, we had a, we had a viewing of this on our Patreon. Um, yeah really fun uh, i would i would more legally describe it as a watch along yeah watch sorry along. it was the watch along. You're right. my, my mistake yeah. um and uh uh yeah it was uh it was it was really good fun we talked a lot about what he was wearing and that dicky mentioned his cheekbones are just yeah. like oh. razors <laughs> yeah cheekbones like his whole face is just chiseled just it's, just, uh, it's from yeah. granite yeah, yeah. It's, from, it's from dehydration guys Blue <laughs> like that's how he that looked, that's how that works it's yeah he just dehydrated himself to look he like looked great but he was dying crazy. in that scene he also said in an interview that he originally went into audition for the part of the police officer who arrests his character at the end um but asked what was going on with the lead and he was told that they want a star for that role um, right. they were looking for either john malkovich or christopher walken close enough both would have been good picks <laughs> oh man can you imagine how much better that movie would be with either of those actors? <laughs> Chris, like, like I guess it's a little, it's a little later than Deer Hunter, Chris Walken, but it's, it's, it's still like that's pre, it's pre Batman Two, Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, that is that's a very interesting niche Walken. I'd be really curious to know what he would have been like. Or like a John Malkovich naked Tai Chi scene, um, I think would just be. Didn't we do that in the red anyway. That before. You, his demand would be to film it first and facing the camera. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He'd want full frontal. <laughs> you won't get the same impact unless you can see his dangly bits. Or maybe they like they they offered it to him. He's like, I'll do it as long as I get full frontal Tai Chi uh, oiled up scene in a motel. And they and wrote everything. Like, no. <laughs> he scouted all locations. They had it, and then he pulled out at the last That's minute. Right. And then That's they right. had to hire the guy. Was like, okay, we got to do all the shit now. They call that pulling a Malkovich. It's very common in the industry. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's oh, when you no. demand a naked Tai Chi scene in your writer, uh, yeah. and then you pull out unexpectedly at the last yeah. minute. Dippy guy, Mr. Falcon. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love radio. Uh, the edits of those things. That was um surprised me uh was that they would always like censor the swear words uh but mercilessly shooting a man in the face a-okay i yeah, I, cool. I don't know who i guess it's probably just like a hollywood um, this would be a great to have hollywood reporter nick horton and executive producer nick horton comments on but it must have been just like someone somewhere in an editing bay being like let's just make these hilarious because like my favorite is uh the, my favorite one I think ever is uh, is the Big Lebowski on the on the edit there because Big Lebowski had the most f words out of any film ever at its time, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a an excellent scene in which uh, Walter Sobchak yells, "This is what you get uh, when you fuck a stranger in the ass," and mm -hmm. um, and I think it got edited to, "This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps." And I just <laughs> <that> is... <laughs> there's an in, certain implication there though, but, oh. and if it wasn't for the implication, ah. It's good stuff. Um, original director, uh, John McTiernan, who made the original Die Hard, had to drop out of Die Hard 2 to make a different film, uh, which is why. <laughs> which he had is to why. Out to do that. He didn't just. And what, and what was the film? The Hunt for Red October. Oh! oh. It, was oh far, it was a far better. <laughs> Nailed it. He made the right choice. Yeah. Which is a far better. Um, and then uh, the majority, I just, I found a bunch of Die Hard 2 facts to kind of, uh, like I've seen after the three of these years of these going along, these these excite you guys. Um, the majority of Die Hard 2's budget came from product placement. Hmm. Like Pepsi Cola? Pepsi -Cola? Uh, Black and Deck are paid to have their new cordless drill used in the film by Bruce Willis himself. Eh. Did he kill a guy with it? Uh, no, they cut it out of a theatrical version, and Black and Decker <laughs> sued the producers. Oh, damn! Wow. Yeah. 
Maybe the yeah. icicle scene was, in fact, like just a Black and Decker power drill the first it's... time. And they're like, yeah, I don't know if this works. That was as well. animated over, kind of like the, <laughs> yeah. the lightning and the taser the old woman has. It's actually every time he shoots his gun, it's actually just him using the drill. And they <laughs> Because it just didn't make sense. Yeah, if you slow it down, it actually <laughs> says Black and Decker. It's just distorted. Yeah, he's just like, yippee ki motherfucker. But, <laughs> I think you missed the opportunity for yippee ki Black and Decker. Yeah, okay. <laughs> God, how did we I have been one-upped. <laughs> Uh, we've been doing these at focus groups, but we think the product placement might be a little on the nose on this one, guys. We might have to dial it back just a little bit. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. I want to talk about a, a couple of scenes that came up at the, earlier in the start of the movie. The first, of course, Naked Tai Chi we've covered. Um, Danny, the other one I kind of want to bring up is synchronized hotel room leaving. What? Synchronized hotel room this. leaving. So good. No. No? So when you have uh, the the bad guy, I forget his name, so I was going to say William Sadler, leaving his hotel room and his crew uh, exit their hotel rooms and join him in formation, but at the same time, like, oh, leaving the yeah, different I rooms. About the choreographed exit. The choreographed, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he, how many times do you think Sadler made his crew do that uh, before he let them get on the elevator because, like, one guy kept fucking up the timing? Seven, perfect. Seven. What I was going to go. I mean, this was a this is a fine this is a finely tuned uh, paramilitary operation, John. I mean, these guys were training in a warehouse yeah. for and probably no three to six months. Of our traffic control works. <laughs> and yeah, we're not even there yet, but we have a lot of really good questions about that. And it yeah, like somehow a, worked. Like clearly, the first thing they did before coordinating the church takedown or any of the other uh, elements that were really essential to this was rehearsing the exit from the hotel room. That was probably week one uh, in, mm -hmm. in in the gangster playbook. Probably, yeah. Uh, was it, of those people leaving the hotel room, a lot of famous faces. Uh, you have the T one thousand is one of uh, the yeah, bad guys. Is. Yeah, uh, John Leguizamo is one of the bad guys. Uh, a little Luigi from the Mario movie himself. Not known for. Is that other. what we? Is that what we remember yes, John Leguizamo for? for? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's done anything else. No, has he? Uh, he was in John Wick. He was oh yeah, that. that's right. That's the only two things he's done. I that's feel good. like he was the voice of an animated dog at some point. Don't believe you. Wasn't he Sid the Sloth from the Ice Age movies? Yes, there, that's sure. what. I Feel like that's not true either. No, that's no, like no. Yes, he he's definitely shots? one of the he's one of the so age, age uh, No, he's the weird mole thing. He's the is that oh it's oh that's a sloth. Yes, he had he had a Netflix special about Mexico, and that's about it. Oh, Romeo done. plus Juliet. Two Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julia Newmar. The, uh, oh, yeah. Two Wong Fu was the other one I was going to say. Two Wong Fu was good. Yeah. They did um, decide to cut his role almost completely out. Uh, which Leguizamo thinks is because of his height compared to his co-stars. He's a yeah, makes gigantic five, yeah, five seven. Um, <laughs> which would have probably made him tower over Bruce Willis. Compact yeah. man. Uh, so they gave all of his dialogue to every uh, other uh, squad member, apart from one line, which they had dubbed over by a different actor. <laughs> oh, but, so he really wasn't in the movie. So he really he was not in the movie whatsoever. Cool. It's fantastic. Hey, uh, let's talk airport security. Uh, there's an old lady on a plane with a taser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is before 9-11. Shit like that happened. You do whatever. You probably sold it on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Just Sky Mall taser. And <laughs> like, there are way bigger problems than airport security in this movie But when it comes to how airplanes work. But like, yeah. Like way literally, problems? this is an era where the lock on the bathroom door was stronger than the one on the cockpit. Like, this is... Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very yeah. They, they probably did keep it unlocked. That is true, like one hundred percent. Yeah, but Pete, uh, I have to ask you. Kind of, you mentioned air traffic controlling a little bit here. So, yeah. just along the lines of that, if an unprecedented freak winter storm strikes without warning, encasing all runways and sheets of ice and reducing visibility to zero, you have multiple flights holding with dwindling fuel while others declare emergencies due to icing. How yep. would you talk them through that unprecedented crisis? You wouldn't. You wouldn't have to. Just, just a lot of die. <laughs> because air traffic control doesn't work that way. So there's levels to air traffic control, right? Even in, uh -huh. in the United States and in Canada, we have air traffic uh -huh. control centers, which are called um, uh, ATRCCs in the US. I think. Um, <laughs> well, and then they have towers, right? Yeah, okay. And there's, 
there's levels even within that. Wow. Um, you so, mean they're not just like ranch style towers? <laughs> no, exactly. So as soon as it's like a minimum split place, level towers like here. That, visibility <laughs> zero, cav okay. Like it's not cav okay. You got a visibility of zero, RVRs of zero. Um, the fact that communication went down for like 20 minutes at one point at the maybe tops five minute mark, all of those planes would have gone to a different airport without talking to it. Like they would have just gone contacted New York center or well, hold on a second here. Minneapolis Peter, center they're in, they're over Washington DC. Yeah. Okay. Where yeah. are they going to go? Okay. Come on. There's, actually, gonna... uh, there's an airport 27 miles from the one in question. But that's where the bad guys B team has taken over just in case people get redirected. So they all, took all over commercial airlines that airport have, as well. Uh, at least one backup, if not two uh, backup mm -hmm. airports, they just automatically go to in case of any kind of like communications. And like, let's say the bad guys did shut down comms to um, uh, I, Virginia uh, ATRCC. They would have just gone to New York and been I mean, like, "Hey, what the fuck's going on?" Just, or they would have gone on an emergency, and just, everything would have been fixed. I just wanted to say oh, that, over. like. I do just say something here. Uh, like Pete has irrevocably ruined a lot of things for me, <laughs> but the fact that they could have just flown away to a different place just completely not, destroys it, this movie. And it's not even just that they you, could. Man. They one hundred percent would have. They would not. Like as soon uh, as comms went what? down, there's like a hundred of them up there. Why do not one do of them was like? That? Why don't we? No. Hey, they could see it. They could see another airport from where they are. I guess not. Yeah, literally, like, 25, like, 27 miles away. Now, just to say, I want to just not to, not to kind of try and kind of poke holes in your argument, Pete. But were okay. you an aircraft controller in 1990? I wasn't. No, sorry. So can you like actually say that the rules haven't significantly changed in the past 33 years? I can actually. Part of my training is to learn like uh, airport rules uh, going back. Absolutely. Like 40, Just 50 like years. I thought. Like you literally can. though, like as grown adults, <laughs> raise your hand if it ever occurred to you that in the many times you've watched this film, that it ever occurred to you that these guys could have just landed somewhere else. It's a big deal. Yeah, I've never, I never occurred. I never, to me. I, I didn't think of that. I don't know why. I think <laughs> why did this ever occur to me? <laughs> yesterday, like, I like, yesterday, yesterday, have enough fuel to go to at least. Um, it's like a quarter of the way to another. Like, so let's say a plane has to fly 500 miles. They have to have at least like 625 miles worth of fuel, type thing, like or more, um, depending on the size of the aircraft. So like they could have gone all sorts of places without any issue, like. Mm -hmm. Just it just speaks to the the spell, uh, the magical spell that this movie uh, casts upon its audience. It's true. And would you it's suspend true. all when they the ILS, uh, suspend all belief in amazing. other airport potentials? Like when that plane crashes because of the ILS, that's very unlikely. Like uh, I'll suspend disbelief because it is potentially possible, but the way they did it, it isn't. But. Yeah, I, I mean, can't believe O'Brien would do that to his plane. We're also that's way funny. we're also way we just way, we jumped way ahead in the movie. But, oh, I apologize. Oh, sorry. We're, uh, we're doing this chronologically. I didn't know we were doing this. Like, well, I assume most people that, like, I'm going to assume most people never saw Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Oh, I, I assumed it, everyone was watching it while we were talking about it. Yeah. And, not, and, <laughs> for the past two years, I've tried to do it chronologically or tried to have a structure to it. And this year, I just gave up. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm just kind of taking things <laughs> as it comes. In which case, like many other things in John's life, he's just yeah. given up. Well, <laughs> given up. In which case, I'd like to interject with a, a favorite stoned game that I used to play with my my roommates in university, which was taking uh, Die Hard uh, titles and later on all other film titles and just replacing uh, uh, Die with Poo. So it becomes Poo Hard. Uh, also, mm. Poo Hard 2, Poo Harder. Poo Hard 3, Poo Hard with a Vengeance. <laughs> Live, Live free, free or Poo, Poo Hard. hard. <laughs> uh, you can then apply this to pretty much every, any film and just laugh for probably four hours. It's great, guys. You can try it at home. Poo you Wars. know, guys, you know, they a say that all men are created equal. But if you look at me and you look at Val, you can see that that statement just isn't true. <laughs> Normally, no, you can you bring a guy on Scott Steiner you got a 50 -50 promo. chance of having a good interview but you know i'm a freak and i'm not normal mm -hmm. so you know you've got at least a 25 percent chance of having a good i can interview. see you reading that you piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> scott steiner math promo guy 144 uh, point in a point uh, six six percent chance of having a good interview <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, the end 
Yeah. Uh, how we feel? So in one of the earliest action uh, films, Bruce Willis um, sees some things that are suspicious and yes, stereotypes a character and follows him, uh, I'm assuming because of race, yeah. uh, into the baggage handling. Um, mm -hmm. How do we feel about Bruce Willis using a machine that is delicate enough to sort very large bags, um, but will crush a man's skull? Uh I, I, you know what? I, I'm going to say in these days, I wouldn't be surprised if, if like baggage handling machines were just like the random factory from an Acme cartoon, like from a Looney Tune cartoon. <laughs> it's also so steamy in there. Am I, am I remembering that right? I just no, remember just remembering that right. Yeah. So much steam. Like, why, wh what is, is it coal powered? How is no, this? Steamy. They, they filmed that in, um, in Denver, uh, at the Denver uh, airport in Colorado. And that has an underground baggage uh, area that, like that most airports wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. and it's very hot down there, so like they probably, of course, did add smoke. But yeah, that's that's just how it is at like that one particular airport. Oh. Man, we're getting the deep cuts here. Those what? seem like horrible working conditions, by the way. Like, oh, yeah, it's just probably real bad every day. Baggage just... handlers are not paid well. They're like paid like a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's not true. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they are referred to as throwers, so. Yeah. It's also part of Pete's job to know the last 50 years of history of baggage handling rules. So that, we can't that, that, that with him. Pete, I'm sorry, I'll just Pete, is, there, Pete, Pete is excellent at handling his baggage. All it is. Well, Expert when, you hand years, it, when it drops a, little, a couple extra inches, that's, it becomes a little harder. Are we going to? No, it's because you're 40 now. Well, you gotta have, you got to have some a little bit more expertise. You know what I is mean? It, like, you know, it takes a little the, bit more to throw that bag around. I get it. <laughs> yep. This is Damn probably where Peter talks about having to lower the water in the toilets. I mean, yeah, you, sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> That's normal, isn't it? Like at 30 and at 40 and then again at like 60. Eventually, it's just a gulch in there. Just, oh, man. You just, you just, tuck you in, really, really got to flush before you. You've got yeah. to get up before you flush. Otherwise, you oh, might yeah. have some problems. This yeah. is great in chat, by the way. Kim L coming and saying, imagine the same movie, but with cars in a gas station instead of planes in an airport. And it's just a bunch of cars circling around a Tesoro. Wait, like the movie Cars? Because I'm kind of into that. <laughs> I would no, <laughs> you cannot get me started on cars, Danny. You know I do not stop. It is the most disturbing. No, I'm not even. Yeah, there's a lot of to... questions for cars. I mean, John, you've sent me some of the stuff. I found yeah. none of it disturbing. <laughs> yeah, all of it makes perfect well, sense. Videos were kind of sexy, but most of how... them really disturbing. <laughs> how do you um? How do you crucify a car? That's the number one question I have from watching the Cars movies. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Are they are they Christians? They have a Pope mobile, which a implies pope. a car Jesus, which means that a car was crucified for, uh, I don't know, an extended warranty. I don't know how that would translate. Then you know better than I do. There's also a a, a car uh, queen. Uh, therefore, I mean, must have received her divine right from God. So yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of elements. Uh, also, that, there's that... World War II. So yeah, no, not. Michael Caine's there too. In the movie Planes, which is set in the Cars universe, or universe, there's World universe. War II references. Yeah, I see. Which... Like, I don't see any problems with anything you're saying. <laughs> what do you think happened? In... No, I'm not going there. No, All right, no, let's like, move I on. Have so many things that would just not only get us demonetized, but removed from the platform entirely, and what maybe fired. Um, yeah, what else we got? Fired. What's that? I mean, let's not talk about car holocaust. Oh, okay. Let's so move on to something else. About the scene where the gun comes to him on the on the on the walkway. I thought I thought that scene was. Uh, I'm gonna kick I'm you gonna fucking kick ass. ass. <laughs> I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. Are you, are you referring to how quickly the gun moves down the walkway towards Bruce Willis? Yeah, I like I told John during the scene. It's obviously an homage to Star Wars. Oh, well, that's an interesting one. Yeah, explain further. Yeah, as I'm stealing John's idea, um, <laughs> uh, John McClane is is pretending to be uh, Luke Skywalker stuck in the top of the of the Wampa Den. That's what those things are called, right? The white things on Hoth. The Wampa, yeah, that's Wampa. Uh, and he re he's reaching for the lightsaber and he pulls it to his hand with the force. But here, McClane uses his ingenuity and uh, you know 
back gun taping skills to hit oh. the the button with a lead pipe and then have his gun come to his hand. Yeah, pretty sick. He pokes at it, and then he just shoots that guy so many times. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> I'm reading. It's I'm, I'm so quoting. slow. Like the the machine pulling the gun to his hand takes such a long freaking time, and the guy knows what he's doing. You can see the gun traveling down the way, and he's and on like, the same he's, walkway. No. All he has to do is go a little faster. He's very uh, arrogant about his skill set, though. He's like, "Yeah, this guy." Oh, what about the recurring uh, theme when the reporter goes up to the the military guy and he's like, "Do you have any words?" And he's like, "Yeah, two fucking you." <laughs> Funny. And that's how they find out who the bad guy is because when the same reporter asked John McClane, he says he has two words fucking off. And he's like, oh, that's what this guy said. And he's like, what did you say? And that's the only reason they find out who the bad guy is. Unbelievable. Hmm. It's fantastic. Um, I will say him reading from an original 1990 review of Die Hard 2 by Roger Ebert. Go ahead. Oh, Ebert. Uh, he says, because Die Hard 2 is so skillfully constructed and well directed. Right. Yep. It develops a momentum that carries it past several credibility gaps that might have capsized a lesser film. Uh, for example, how about the scene where the tower informs the circling airplanes that they'll be out of radio contact for a couple of hours and the jets should just keep on circling? Why can't these planes simply establish radio contact with other ground transmitters and be diverted to alternative airports? God so even it. in 1990, <laughs> they were aware of the issues that they had. Uh, even in 1990, they weren't as completely blind as a very young Val Heffelfinger watching this with wide there's, eyes. There's a scene when they're taking everything over and one of the guys is like, we have to use VHS, um, but it'll probably be okay. Like as if VHS radio communications. Is UHF? Like the fuck? No, they, I'm pretty sure they say VHF because. Uh, oh, VHF. Use, yeah. Um, as if it's like Stone Age technology. Um, and VHF radio waves have like a 500 mile radius. Like they can, like it's, we used to use them as backups continually, like until the nineties. So it was, you know, there's also dumb it, stuff. It, is that the, is, is it, I'm, I'm just remembering, uh, the, is that, is that the guy in the basement that he runs into that he gets the jacket from? Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes, just like Iwo Jima. <laughs> so he's a world war two vet, which is also kind of awesome. Uh, which you could have these days, he'd be a very old man, maybe <laughs> dead, but um, <laughs> well, no, uh, so he'd be like 18 in 1945, that was only 80 years, so he'd be like 102. Yeah, no, <laughs> World, War II veteran, World, World War II vets are very, very old now. Um, but yeah, no, I just I, I just put together that he was a World War II vet, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, this movie also uh, was the first movie to ever have a um, a, a digital computer generated uh mashup of a map painting and a live action shot uh, at the end when the, the the camera pulls back after they get everyone off the plane oh really yeah. oh, that's a beautiful shot yeah it is a composite map painting or a composite of a map painting with live action footage john is it the first movie to incorporate a naked tai chi scene <laughs> <laughs> done a lot of research on this danny no yeah no it is not no wow okay Dickie's done more research. We'll see, later. <laughs> we'll see uh, later. Actually, later. hold on. The, yeah. I, the the nuance of what that was the first of, I think, might be must be different because, like, Star Wars used matte paintings with with live action in front of them. Did they? Like, use that's a what. That's what a matte combine the two together, or did they splice? Oh, be together? in camera. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Fair point. Yeah, yeah. it's all perspective and and slides. But yeah, mm -hmm. this one's the first one here. Got it. Um, yeah. Uh, so on Die Hard 2, considerably bigger body count than the first Die Hard based on the fact that an entire 747 explodes. Yeah, that's that's, true. that was a bummer. Yeah. Bummer. Um, what do we think of the, the plot and the motivations? Uh, in the Die Hard 2, the idea is the William Sadler guy is trying to get um, a dictator, a warlord, General Ramon Esperanza. Esperanza. He's accused of using American money to buy guns, which seems like a bizarre thing to seem as a bad thing. Um, and he was, they have to rescue him before he's extradited. Mm -hmm. Is this an appropriate threat for John McClane uh, after beating some bank robbers? I think, I think it's, yeah, I think that's perfectly par for the, it's perfectly cromulent option for him to be uh, letting his, his 
his resources to. But really, I mean, what it is is the fact that his wife is trapped in the sky. I mean, that's that's what this it's it, it matters not what criminals between him and his perhaps still estranged wife at this time. Um, mm -hmm. It just no, they're, it they're, just matters that they are in the way. They're happy to gather. It's been two years since the first Die Hard when they were having problems. Okay. Uh, and yeah, they're they're simply at the in laws for Christmas, uh, who are in the DC area. Um, and then chat very upset by the way that uh, John McClane beat all of the guys who were supposed to be Green Berets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. What are we thoughts on? So one of my favorite things in the gun is, uh, is the, the the ammo, the like the duct tape marked ammo packs for the guns. Val, as a young child mm -hmm. in the forgotten wastelands of Canada, watching this on a Betamax cassette through the largest window. metropolitan area in, in North America, but it's cool. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, watching course. it on a Betamax cassette through the window of a neighbor. We uh, didn't do Betamax. We were smarter than word. that. Uh, what was your thoughts? Uh, did you spot the, the twist coming where, where the good guys were actually bad guys? Or, the shooting bikes up there! Um... <laughs> No, I can't say I saw the twist coming, uh, uh, but uh, I also can't tell you a time in my life where I, I'm aware of not knowing this movie in, ex in exquisite detail uh, and not just being, uh, as we've already learned, following every plot twist as if uh, they were lightning bolts from a clear sky. And uh, and yes, like I, I was hook, line, and sicker, sunker, sunk, whatever. But also, like, I just think like, like firing off an entire clip of blanks in a like uh like a small room like a control tower, like all those people's ears would be bleeding. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in retrospect, like it's a very loud thing to do. Um, yep, yeah, Bra yeah, Brandon Lee is like, we should do that shit on the crow immediately. <laughs> oh, draw the line at Lee, and that's it. That's uh, so we'll, you'll have many lines, but I've managed to cross what I think is the only one that you have. It's the only one I've ever, I've ever brought which up. Which is Crow Star Brandon Lee, which yeah. uh, it might. If you want to, if you like, if you want to talk about cars having sex <laughs> or the Holocaust involving airplanes, okay. <laughs> Brandon Lee. I'm going to add that to table. my almanac of Falcon off Facts. The table. Is, off the do table. Not, it was actually just helicopters. The name that were... of Brandon Lee. Yeah. Um, oh well on the plus side chat agrees with you and says that's messed up but <laughs> guys it's been like 30 years <laughs> didn't he do what was that uh bruce lee movie that he did before he did the crow the dragon was it uh, the dragon was it, Fuck was me, it not the dragon? Then i forgot it <laughs> Love that movie. I, I would say but i don't want to cross any lines yeah that makes Keep sense yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay what <laughs> Go on. what's even we happening made... right now what <laughs> is that hand, what is the hand gesture what, is that, even, what is that about dismissive Continue. Continue. is that an italian thing it Maybe. is it's i'm crazy. not even italian i wouldn't know uh, i have a sun clip that says otherwise except my board doesn't want to work uh Look, so i've we'll made several assumptions that are predicated on that and so oh, yeah. i do have an italian last name my father was adopted Bam. Oh, <laughs> interesting. What, what what assumptions did you make thinking that he was Italian? Look, I don't want to talk about it anymore. They're very racist. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I like the song, man. If you've ever watched Auntie Donna, basically all of the things that they talk about, mm -hmm. which are still true. I'm just not yeah. Italian. I just, uh, uh, his incredibly matted and thick everywhere hair. Um, yeah. Just, I, mean, I, mean, I just talent. made the assumption. Yeah, look at how hairy you like. It's very, very, very dark. Um, I am, yeah. And as I get older, I get hairier everywhere. Like, I'm yeah. not losing it. I uh, I went I went for a haircut on the weekend, and the barber, without asking, started uh, shaving my ears. And yep. I was like, oh, geez. That's... <laughs> yeah, that's my last, my last How that feel, buddy? Just... Well, I do come from a lineage of uh, tremendous ear hair. Uh, my oh, okay. <laughs> my grandfather's ear hair could be braided. He was hard of hearing, but I think it was just he needed to trim his ear hair. It was ear ridiculous. Hair, right? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also the oldest man who ever existed, as far as I'm concerned. It's just life, you know? Like, at 30, your balls drop a second time. <sighs> they drop a third time, and then your, your hair starts growing in your ears. You get one weird hair. long one on your back, I mean, and you ask people to look at it. And you're like, is there a mole there? And they'll they'll never tell you yes, but no, you're no. pretty sure. But they won't judge right your you. face. You know, that's what I've experienced, Pete. Yeah. What They're was gonna that? judge you for using a scrotal blanket. Uh 
Just kind of wrapping that buddy up. Do you think the guy in the naked Tai Chi scene had like a cock sock on? I was actually thinking about that. This is before, you know, like they had had like procedures on set for like, uh, you know, what do they call it? They call them like, oh, yeah, there's a cock sock with like 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 privacy tube or something. I don't yeah, know. There's yeah, a term sure. for it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I this is long never before thought that. about that outside of when someone brings it up in my life. Uh, it probably he probably was just forced to stand there naked for 14 hours a day well, for like okay, a week so and a half. Thing that that, <clears throat> that bothers me about it just slightly, and uh, I think Dicky pointed this out, and he's 100 percent right. Mm-hmm. You can't see his balls. You can't see. Oh, his they're balls. up. There. They're cold. probably up there. They must Very be cold in there. Tight. They might, they might be up there. They must or be they're in a tube. tube. That's what I'm saying. Or they're in the privacy tube. Privacy <laughs> tube. <laughs> he is very green sock that they just put over it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The green, the green sock. Green screen sock. You can get uh, it on Amazon. They, they say here, Mark that? Murphy saying it's a hog hider, uh, as I mm. believe the technical <laughs> term. Although term. down voting people did nail what I was trying to think of, which is intimacy coordinators. Which, yeah, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't have existed back then, but I'm sure. No. Like, I love an intimacy coordinator. I think that's just such the best idea that we've ever come up with. Man, have you could you imagine applying yourself to that, Pete? How no. how mad would my wife be if for Christmas I got her a consultation appointment with an intimacy coordinator? And I'm like, I think it's really important that we we know <laughs> what is it is acceptable. Well, it's been real, dude. Uh, have you have you been inadvertently injured a few times? Uh, <laughs> so you, need, you need someone to 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 help out with that. To, to uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Got a splint, but not in the place that you would think. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's after the third drop. Uh, <laughs> it's a good callback. Um, uh thanks for for buying time while everything loaded up um just like uh, you won't uh, i screwed it up just like you would this, this on screen here real quick there we go yes <laughs> yeah he we'll was ripped he yeah, was ripped. no balls again it's right yeah his he, testicles should be well in shot there yeah, maybe no, that I maybe think. maybe actually they didn't publish it but this was the first digital mat uh that they ever did Mm-hmm. The just, legs are a his, digital mat. His and testicles just, his are like body. matted out somehow. But could have they also just been like, could he have been doing the helicopter and they just like edited out every third in, like scene? Like, but like, yeah. look how precise the camera work is in this shot. Like, exactly. you have you have like the the mirror showing the front of him, but not the top cock. And, Jeez. and sorry, you said the top cock. The the root. There's no root here. <laughs> All stem. <laughs> Also, like, like the cinematography. Did this win an Oscar for that? Um, the root. Jeez. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, man. Like, look at him. He's just, he's, he's just living like life. Like, it's, like, it's great that he got this on camera so perfectly. Look at that butt. Yeah. Something to show the kids. You know, I've, I've never nor ever will like look this sharp doing Tai Chi in a, no, in, a, in a. Also, can we shout out the furniture in this scene, this hotel room in general? Like, look at that plush. Like probably like pinkish carpet, uh, the the beigey everything. Everything's a round edge. Like there's not a there's, there's, flesh colored. There's, there's not there's not a a like a square edge in this entire uh, decorate de- entire hotel room. It's it's this Some is really reminding me. You know, that carpet is really plush for. A I hotel. mean, if if I walked into a carpet and took my shoes off and my toes curled into that, I would want to get naked and do some tai chi immediately. I would not. I would want to take my toes right out of any hotel carpet that I could curl them into <laughs> and immediately go put on shoes. <laughs> uh, You're Mark such Murphy, an American. Asking uh, real quick if he has two purses on the chair. Um, I'm not American enough to know those are guns, so yeah, those are two purses. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a technical ju- term, John. Uh, it's a purse. I would a also... Burst. I'd also like to point out that there is no like clothing anywhere, which means that he walked in to do his Tai Chi completely naked, wearing his gun holster, uh, which I like. Maybe they maybe they shot some takes of this with him wearing his guns. That would have been oh, that would have that would have added an element. Yeah, what you don't actually see, like this is a composite shot. The mirror over here, that's one shot. 
Uh, you don't see the, the actual William Sadler. He's holding his balls and shaft uh, with his <laughs> right hand. <laughs> there's actually there's actually a guy in one of those green suits just holding his dick and balls. <laughs> And after that job, Pete was like, you know, I don't want to do this for life, but air traffic control seems neat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So tell oh, me more about yes. how you took over the air traffic control thing, because I'm interested in that kind of work. Oh, yeah. Tell us the, the, the technical aspect of taking over a church, murdering an old man, mm -hmm. and just setting up shop. Yeah. Um, so it'd be pretty difficult because they would have to take over all of the frequencies in the tower without anybody noticing. Um, like, sh shut down the two backup generators they probably have at Dulles. Um, they would have like, to... Meanwhile, in a country enemy uh, that are enemies with the United States, go on, yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, backup, yes, uh -huh. There's just a lot that's going on there. Like, I think at one point he remotely adjusts the ILS to make it so that um, yeah. the plane thinks that it, it's going to be 200 feet too high or 200 feet too low. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it crashes. Um, not, like, just not even possible to do it that way um they would have had to have like been at the island but how could you do it how might you do it instead Peter? i mean like oh. hornets can do that but it but it gets noticed pretty quick mm -hmm. um also they the plane wouldn't have given off all the warnings that it did um when it was wrong i think at one point it starts like g giving it um uh, crash warnings uh which is just it wouldn't think there was anything to crash into um if because it, it was 200 lower properly mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. um, full of something explosive, right? That plane just exploded into a lot of fire, which is very unlikely. Yeah. This so I so this here's a great irony of 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 like me falling for every other suspension of disbelief, and I have to lump my father into this bracket because I distinctly remember him talking about how like shit fuel doesn't burn like that. No, it doesn't. Like it long be before impressive. September 11th. Was your but, dad like, George Bush? Exactly. Uh, um no especially at the end when he like throws the the lighter casually oh, yeah. into it and then spectacular explosion yeah. like that doesn't happen that couldn't inside happen. the fuselage it 100 percent could burn like that but once it's escaped um jet 1a fuel which is what a 747 would have used back then doesn't burn without like you doing shit to it you can't just throw a lighter on it yeah also looking up here uh dulles has four aircraft control towers is it possible to reroute four different towers to one small church? Uh, like, you can probably suspend disbelief and be like, if they took a long time prepping um, and took over the frequencies and shut down like all the backup generators um, and did it in such a way that something got no tammed out to center to say, hey, this airport's going to go down for half an hour. Um <laughs> yes maybe but then once that NOTAM went out all those airplanes would have just been told hey you can't land there for the next 30 minutes and they would have gone to other airports are you alright we're out so, I just have to comment that for some reason Jill Atkins just like from from five minutes ago is like it's tape they can't show ball sack without an X rating I guess <laughs> yeah <more. laughs> <I don't know. laughs> idiot but it has been like why why couldn't why couldn't they why yeah. couldn't they show his balls oh of course <laughs> guys of course Final thoughts on, on Die Hard 2. It's been an amazing 50 minutes we've been talking about this so far. About the naked um, uh, Tai Chi. About, um, we got as far <laughs> as uh, Bill Sadler's naked ball sack. I, I do, I do want to ask just one question because this kind of did, did. Does anyone else have a problem or like at least think of uh, having your uh, throat graphically slit every time you're offered juicy fruit? Oh well, no, it was Spearman. It was Wrigley Spearman. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Now I do. Thanks. You don't know. You don't what? You guys watched this movie recently. Did, did they know yeah, how yeah, he slits. I didn't see what kind of gum it was. He just slits the guy's throat though, right? Like he offers him he offers him it's like I think it's the white and white and green. I think it's Wrigley Spearman. Yeah. Oh yeah, too. that's Wrigley's. Yeah. That would have been much messier than they did, unless that guy was just had like no blood just whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a second. You know, because they cut away pretty fast. All the... <laughs> Actually, you know, um, Juicy Fruit, he'd have the full flavor of the gum. It's not a bad way to go. Fire in the time that he had his throat slashed. <laughs> not a bad way to go. <laughs> By the yeah, time the funeral comes around, still fresh. 
for sure. <laughs> Got his money's worth out of that stick. Yeah. Oh it was originally life. a black and dater black and decker reciprocal saw <laughs> <laughs> oh beautiful he cut a guy's dick off and black and decker was like real upset about it <laughs> <laughs> they cut off that scene and just had him do look you wanted the pro turkey. you said you wanted the product placement back in the movie <laughs> we just how sharp it was we put it in. What do you want? We had this Tai Chi scene we couldn't explain. So we were just like, let's just. I feel like there's a. With an, an awful accident with the prototype Black and Decker. I feel like That's there's a real opportunity. All the time. I feel like there's a real opportunity to just. Because no one else knows that fact. I don't know where that fact even came from, but there's a real opportunity to just take this movie and just Photoshop slash. Uh, slash After Effects in Black and Decker appliances into every. <laughs> 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 Instead of planes, full movie, full movie. Instead of planes, it's high quality reciprocal sauce yeah. that are flying <laughs> like straight. Uh, Man, uh, on the table. Oh, it was Black and Decker saw. Man, it is I'm a smooth. Trying to think. Uh, see how easy that is. Like, just get that in there. I do love in the movie how many people just walk into the airport control tower. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. there's no like scenes of them breaking security or anything. They just like wander in. Which has like never been a thing. Like they, See, they all have had some some form of locking. Oh come on! You told me that's how you got your job there. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I just wandered in one day. In, um, including well, the, really, the scene that. That, that blows my mind is the one where the airport manager walks in and talks to the guys, and they all turn around and listen to him. That would just <laughs> never happened. Literally, none of us would give a shit about an airport manager. Like, if there were no planes in the air, maybe I would turn around and be like, "Hey, dude, how are you doing?" Who person who doesn't work with me at all because you're part of a private organization um but the fact that all of the controllers are like oh man let me listen to him instead of paying attention to my radar is like turn this my crazy favorite, incident my favorite part of that is when bruce willis and the reporter are kicked out and they go down in the elevator um and then the cops at the bottom would be like where'd the other guy go he's like oh he had to leave and the cops were okay with that answer yeah and did yeah. no following up whatsoever yeah, they go. <laughs> oh i guess that makes sense yeah <laughs> Don't get paid enough for this. Uh, <laughs> Danny, closing thoughts on Die Hard 2, Die Harder, or Poo Hard 2, Poo Harder. Poo Hard 2, Poo Harder. Terrible. Huh. No, no, really? Come on, that was not a good movie. Like, it was fun, maybe. I would give it that. Oh, it was a Mel's gone. It was a Mel's out of here. <laughs> well, I guess... You can catch Val on Tuesday morning. We're based. If no, you they, they, they already did their show. All they right. did. They did oh. an emergency show. Emergency show. The uh, emergency old world show. Pete, final thoughts on Die Hard Two. Die Harder. Fourth best Christmas movie ever made. Oh, but a Christmas movie. Interesting. It After is. Avatar. After Avatar. Number okay. one. Always. Right. Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. Number two. Oh, next right. year. Yeah. Um, just friends. With Ryan Reynolds and Amy Smart. That's and, a good one. Um, and The Muppet Christmas Carol. That was, that's your, that, that's was, your, that was a good movie. Yeah. It was killer. So it's what fifth. makes that movie? That's fifth. It's uh, Michael Caine just utterly being like, no, I'm going to play this like all of you fuckers are real people. And that <laughs> yeah. makes it an amazing movie. There's that oh. meme where it's like the Michael Caine and um, what's his face? Tim. Um, oh, fuck. The, Roth. The Allen. Not Tim Allen. Timothy uh, Allen. Curry? Tim Curry. Yes. Timothy uh, Curry. Like uh, like how they both handled Muppet movies. And like there's one of them. Just, it's like Michael Caine pre uh, pretended the Muppets were real Shakespearean actors. And Tim Burton or Tim Curry pretended that he was a Muppet. And then both of them just worked amazing. This yeah. is how it should be. Yeah, there's a absolutely. lot of ways you can go with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and now we just get shitty Disney Plus TV series that are... Oh, it was it was tragic. really bad that Muppet TV show. I'm glad they canceled it. I'm so bad. Um, so and on that note about the Muppets, we're going to close the chapter on Die Hard to Die Harder, uh, and mm. we're going to go uh, quickly into a very special edition of Whose Grunt Is It Anyway? Buckle up. Can we cover Just Friends next year? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, just friends. it's like Peter's on the screen. It's just <laughs> a thing. No big deal. He stopped, Blair. He stopped, Blair. What's happening right now? Oh, beautiful. Oh. Uh, so it's the ultimate battle of porn buffs versus gaming geeks yep. to guess that grunt. 
We're going to get ready for Whose Grunt Is It Anyway? It's a fast-paced game show where contestants hear intense grunting sounds yep. and have to identify if they came from an adult movie or in an intense moment on a streamed Warhammer 40,000 game. Yep. Oh, um, shit. Our players will need to determine if it's a high-pitched scream or an unfortunate cream. Can oh. our panel tell the difference between Ron Jeremy blowing a load from Jeremy Atkinson blowing a lead? Oh. Uh, stay tuned to see who can name the grunt. As you beg us to stop playing, whose grunt is it anyway? Uh, yeah. No, it's yeah. a great, great this game. This is a very consensual game, John. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. So, uh, us, yeah. Yeah, you guys notice there's four players on the on the screen. So you are going to be in mm -hmm. teams of two. I feel oh. like, oh, okay. I feel like yeah. I'm about to get canceled. Yeah, I feel yeah. I feel like... Are we doing Mob Rules really versus great. Dad Center, which would be the narrative yeah, teams? Or are we doing how you've uh, lined oh, it up? Oh, yeah, right no, now? I didn't even think about yeah, that. You guys want to yeah. do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah cross this makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. That'll that'll really screw up my scoring. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take Danny. I'll take Danny. Okay, yeah. I'll take you. Bell and Bell. Bell. Oh, Bell. 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 oh, we got graphics. Yeah, yeah. You got what font is that? Whoa. Can we? Yeah, yeah. Can we? Can we put them on the same level? I think they're on the same level. It's just the TVs are fucking everything up. But I would say no, no. The TVs are. You the just made it. You just literally made it the exact same. <laughs> yeah. Is this is this courier right new? up? Right one up. What, what kind of organization are you guys fucking running that you're using like courier <laughs> new fucking <laughs> font? Whoa! Dickie, Spend you know, money. It's a Christmas show. Dickie has some... never Dickie has never come across a first option that he hasn't picked. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something and then I did. Wow. I like that is a lot. maybe the meanest thing you I've ever heard you say about anybody. <laughs> 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 uh, I remind everyone that when I am murdered, it's it's probably him. <laughs> and I just I'm I'm nice <laughs> if he is an XCFL player. You're up. making it seem like, you know, when you're like, hey, we're going to leave the network, FLGN, mostly gone. We're going to go out on our own. Dickie, which show do you want to go for? Um, and when you just listed us first, he was like, yeah, that one. <laughs> that was a strategy, John. That's a strategy. That was a really good strategy. How come one of the zeros is centered and the other one isn't? Because I, I know what, well, I already said this. It's just... It's, it's the, and John's John's zero face. No, like, yeah, that's an interesting take. There you go. I like, yep. I like that. I like okay. that. Okay, yeah, I like it. Good I one. I don't like being associated with Zero, but okay. I'll, 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 oh, you guys face? suck. Wait, this is the worst Christmas <laughs> show ever. <laughs> yeah. uh, Alright, so Peter, since you're new to this show, uh, we're going to have a tester, alright? Wow. Okay. And, stop uh, licking the O, listen. Stop licking the O. Getting He's getting into it, guys. Yeah, right. he, had, yeah. he understands let him, let the town. Let him have okay. his time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is just for Peter, okay? okay. Peter, okay. listen up. Yeah, Pete, listen to this. I'm going to mute you guys so I can hear. Collating that. <laughs> okay, I can't mute just one person. Okay, what's going on? I think he missed it. Is that a porno or 40K? It's a Muppet. It's animal. Was not an option. It's not an option. <laughs> not an option. I, don't get the, I don't get the rules. What's going on here? <laughs> well, you have to... I want Daddy back. <laughs> 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 okay, make the sound again. Okay. Ah. Is that a porno or 40k? That's a 40k player. 40k player? Yeah. Uh, I uh, wanted to elongate it in order for you to get the full breadth of this game. So here it is. Ah. <laughs> Fuck your dice. 40, 40k player. Yeah, no, I, I can a, tell. A, a bonus a bonus point is when we can actually name the 40k name player. The player. But you're, you're you're so like, oh, we'll we'll see. What if I can name the porn star? Uh, that would be <laughs> triple, triple also point, also yeah. also a bonus yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Bonus. I can name the tennis player. Why don't you guys have tennis players to this? That would just make yeah, it. That would be a better. real smart idea. It would uh, not ruin me game. having to do porno recordings all afternoon. So thank you. For that. No, no, we would just do tennis or porn. We would game. get rid of the porn. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, Pete, since you did so great, uh, we're gonna let. Uh, Why wasn't that a point? Well, that was that a test. That's, practice. Practice. that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> we know that you, you know, probably don't watch porn all day and rarely play 40k, so we want to make sure that you've heard these sounds before. Can yeah. an air traffic controller work from home? Um, yeah. Uh, so Those guys work no, from church. No, not yet, but technically, so... yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay, number one. 
I believe uh, we'll do Val and Danny here taking yep. taking the first one. Mm -hmm. Fuck you! Sound like a get large it. room. That sound like a it. large room. Get it one more time. That's what she said. Fuck you! I did uh, m uh, change the guy's voice in order for him mm -hmm. not to be uh, known. Danny, what are you feeling? So to me, uh, it sounds like pornography, Val. Mm -hmm. This guy. Mm. What this do guy you think? The Italian racism. It's a me. Just <laughs> let's see how this is. You go on porn. Okay. Um, I'd let, uh, I mean, I feel, I'm feeling a little bit of reverb there, which suggests well, yeah, but like yeah. you wouldn't hear that in a 40k room because there's too many people. You just hear noise. That's a fair point. That's a fair none. point. Or none. It does sound not to jump in, you guys there, like a a mansion in Hollywood that someone is going to go <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Very much I'll, go with Danny, I'll go with Danny's instinct on this. I'll go with Danny's instinct on this. Well, I'm gonna have to give you a point. That was right. There it is. On the board. I need uh, I need John's uh, happy go lucky music. This is a Johnny Sin situation. All right, Great. you won. Hell yeah, victory what? music. Wait, that was it. There's one question. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it. Sorry, we <laughs> not going to get to turn five. Time to wrap it up. Score it as it is. <laughs> oh, this is okay. All right, I have the right sound effect now. John, John, and uh, Peter, this is your sound. Ladies first. <laughs> that has to be 40k because you said ladies first and you're putting that up as like a misdirect because women don't play 40k, but they do, Dickie. But Pete? Well, ladies no, it's, it's it's 40k. Sounds yeah. like Adam. It's Colin McDade. Final answer. It's 40k. Yeah. It's one of the dickheads and it's 40k. Yeah. Adam or Colin McDade, basically the same person. So. <laughs> I mean, there's no list, but we, we can start there. I guess. Texas already hates me. Unfortunately, you have no points. That was porno, gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. That very loud to said otherwise. I think I have one. I think I have one. No. Yeah. <laughs> there well, now go. we know the next one's going to be 40K. <laughs> Dickie wouldn't do three pornos in a row. That's just dumb. Yeah, I, this is definitely the button I was looking for. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I'm going with the okay. first sound, though. All right. So. I can't believe we got g like gypped out of a question right away. Yeah. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Please, Roma'd. You got Roma'd out of a question, Pete. Mm -hmm. I see how it is. So Danny, one one. Val, this is your this is your sound. That was pretty long. That's fucking Seth Oster. <laughs> Pete, not well, yours. Oh shit, sorry. Shit. Well, that's <laughs> Joe. I think oh, this part we stole it. it. He named if that's who it is, and that's who it is. I'm. I'll give him the point. Oh, like, that's that's gentlemanly. That seems fair. It's uh, it's so I do think it's forty k though. One more. One more. We we'll give us our two. That feels like 40, that's 40k. That's some old man groaning about his back for sure. Yeah, that's 40k. It's not, it's not Seth Oster, probably not. But you can do a right sound because that was 40k. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Seth Oster? laughs> that, that was, uh, my, my note for that was Joe sitting down. Joe sitting I down. I have facilitated mm. this game often enough for you, Dickie, to know when Joe sits the, down the, with slight the, reverb. <laughs> <laughs> this is this game is definitely more is it Joe sitting down or porn? That is <laughs> what this game is. It is actually unfortunate. <laughs> I feel bad now that I'm uh, thinking of it. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go. Now Peter's looking real serious here. Okay, Pete and John, here's your sound. Oh, that's porn. You need it a second time. Yeah. Yes, please. Play the second time. That's Seth Oster, 100%. <laughs> okay. That's what he says to the bird no, before. Probably porn. That's porn? Let's go with porn. You can do a right sound. That was porn. No one That's who's ever playing. One. Asked if anyone liked anything. I was going to say, yeah, no one has ever played on stream for 40K <laughs> and enjoyed it. No. Damn it. No. Okay. Not even one person. No. Not even one. <clears throat> 
Art right. of War contractually obliged to appear happy for three hours a day, which is they why have, they never yeah, stream more than once. Just, like, yeah. if you watch videos of Jack Harpster uh, from, like, three years ago compared to now, you can tell when he started getting paid to be happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's also he three years old. Happy on air. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, they're on the board. So, Val, Danny. Good pressure up here. Yep. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Did Joe miss his chair? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Let me hear this one more time. So, I feel like, I feel like that's boring. I, I feel like it's forty k. You feel like it's really? It does sound good sound quality. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Joe. How do you know it's porn when it's good sound quality? Oh no! No, when it doesn't have good sound quality, I think it's probably porn. Okay. Less good than less good than 40k. Those players have got the mics right up to the thing. Either you're hearing background noise. Hey, Danny, I'm I'm on board, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take you off your uh, your streak here. Let's go. Whoa. All right, yeah, we'll do 40k, Vicky. We can do a right sound. That was 40k. <laughs> yes. Oh, Vicky. Now you have to Google mic'd up pornography. <laughs> I know. I knew, I knew. They're, they're, they're seen through it. Damn it. All right. John, okay. yeah. Peter, here is your sound. Coming within three inches of you. I'm moving within four inches of you. Within three inches of you. Definitely porn. Would you like it again? That's common, Shut up, Pete. <laughs> common, common <laughs> porn direction. I'm moving within three inches of you. What are they going to do? Heroically intervene the penis? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's one thing I know. Was that a witness of a crime? You do have you do have one more listen? Okay. Okay. Coming within three inches of you. Yeah, there's also a crime, three and three I know the kind of porn Dicky looks at to get the sounds. Yeah, this is not. not this isn't Johnny Sins. This no. isn't Johnny Sins we're listening to here. Wow. No, it's probably 40k. Mark Murphy says pile in, but again, Mark Murphy, I don't think it's porn. I think it is 40k. Here, let me help you, Dickie. Yep, you're right. It All is right. 40k. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this game sucks now because you guys just. The first one was the best, but we get all the hard ones on our side. Yeah, yeah that's Monday. fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, I love it. I'm not used to being a contestant. I have a lot more fun when I can't lose. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, is this the one? Here, let me see if this is the right one. Coming within three inches. No, oh, that was the coming three inches of you one. It's 40K. It's, this, this. Gentlemen. <laughs> and gentlemen, this is your sound. Was Seth Oster <laughs> <laughs> sitting on Joe? Sitting on Joe. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> oh, it's like a masticating sound. Yeah, that's Seth Oster for sure. Yeah. Oh, I, and I know, I know who's grown anywhere. That's definitely him. Val, what do you think? I mean, I guess maybe I just think everything is porn. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I again, I, we're up, we're up three two here. I'm not, I'm not getting off this gravy train. Okay, that's what Seth said. So what are we saying? It's Seth. Okay, uh, it is not Seth, but it is. No! It is forty k. Did they get half points? You get no points. They went for it all. You went for it all? All right. Yeah, that's no, we're fine. For it. That's no points. We no, were no, 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 no. You know what? They knew it was 40K. I they don't want to win 40K. this game. Well, no, because they, they didn't specify that it wasn't a porn starring Seth. They just yeah. said it was that. <laughs> and, Seth. All right, hold on a minute. If there is crossover between stream 40K and pornography, like, and we just guess the person, <laughs> that almost... you should just get the point. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. I'm honest. Yeah. That At that would point, be I don't want to play the game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the point, because Val's going to quit if we don't give him the point. I'm looking at Are him you now. Quit, so Val, you don't get the point? Why would I quit? That's I'm not. I'm not the big baby. Oh. Big baby. 
when I killed Tamarkin in our game at his house, immediately that was the face he made, and then oh, he stopped playing no. fantasy. So I was no tired. I was tired. He was just like, <laughs> no, he, he just straight, he just straight beat him up with a giant thunder lizard. It was sick. Oh, yeah. All right, like, I'm listen low. up. So, uh, I only have one more porn sound. So Beautiful. I'm, I'm going to not give you the point for, for uh, suspense. Yeah, let's okay. Tie this game okay. Up. So if they can yeah. tie it up. Then it's a big deal. What kind, of we, what kind of porn are we talking about here, guys? Let's Peter go. John, this is your sound. Enjoy the lash of the spanking. That's Seth Oster. That's that's 40k. That's absolutely Seth Oster. <laughs> that's absolutely Seth Oster yeah. at Warzone Atlanta. Yeah, that's Seth wanna, Lobster. Do you want to hear that one more time? Or are you... Seth Lobster. <laughs> Seth Lobster. Okay, try it again. Let me hear. Enjoy the lash of the spanking. That's scary. Uh, Never mind. I was wrong. Scary at Atlanta. At, at, yeah, famously attended. Is... War <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's porn. I bet. I bet that's probably porn. If it's not porn, it's one of the most awkward. 40K that you've ever is a forty k stream with someone making a funny joke. Oh, is it maybe a minute long, uncomfortable silence? Bloodstone. The greatest, yeah. I, the greatest I Christmas movie I should, Maybe I should next time. It'd probably be harder for you guys. It'd be nice to get. It'd be nice if we got some Mikey sounds for sure. Like when he it, lost and his soul got crushed. Oh yeah. Mm. I don't like those sounds. That's not. No. Alright, hey guys, you're still on the clock. I'd have you know. So, are we saying this is 40k? 40k. Peter, are you on board with his decision? I thought it was tennis, so let's go with it. <laughs> Uh, I need a whole bunch of fart sounds. You're incorrect. That was porn. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Them talking porn. about being whipped was it, porn? It wasn't, it Seth. When did what? Seth start doing porn? Turns, it turns out Diggy didn't choose the first thing he found. Yeah. That is crazy. Uh, I have deep. heard that exact saying on multiple top tables. <laughs> In fact, I heard that from Joe's most recent stream. How do yeah. we know that you're not cheating? Say your sources, Diggy. How come uh, we're not at four? Uh, oh no, because they lost. We didn't get a point. Yeah, okay, that's fine. No, you win. Show us well, your only four two. Sight sources. You did it. Give us he... the triumphant sound. Yeah, give a triumphant sound. There you go, boys. Crushing. Next time, Crushing bring the tennis guys on nail it. Merry Christmas. Beautiful. Hey, man, uh, I just wrote the we... coattails of victory. It's my basic life <sighs> philosophy. That's what I was trying to do with Danny, but then you took him from me. Um, that <laughs> was another whose grunt is it anyway uh, uh, it's, it's Merry Christmas <laughs> yeah Merry Christmas. beautiful Merry it's much animal. harder much harder when you have to answer the questions instead of just asking them after someone else has already done the work not a fan of it <laughs> happy Don't holidays like it. everybody uh, please watch Just Friends with Amy Smart and Ryan Reynolds it's a classic uh, Down Voting People says porn or tennis in the new year neither my wife isn't a fan of me doing either of those um pickleball it is pickle pickle balls but only if they're taped up high um guys Ooh. thank you everyone for joining us here in grim after dark today you're going to find all of our socials and way to support us at grimafterdark.com we are off next week for a small holiday called christmas but we're going to be back starting and again i couldn't remember this when i was writing it so correct me when i'm wrong here guys but on tuesday the 2nd of january at 10 p.m eastern ish um in our new home on tuesday nights uh, we're, we're back where we started. We feel safe in thinking that Dice Check isn't going to come back into that time <laughs> slot anymore. So we can go I, back to like tactics. It was chapter tactics. Our original thing. Was it though? Yeah, it was. It was supposed to be chapter tactics. Oh, chapter, chapter tactics was supposed oh. to record on Tuesdays. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll rebrand into chapter tactics uh, starting for the 2nd of January uh, at 10 new, p.m. New Eastern. name of the show. It is uh, on a Tuesday night home. Uh, if you miss us next week, you're a fool, but check out our entire bag catalog on YouTube. Um, leave comments, but please only to leave us comments to tell us a good location for chicken in your city. Um, mm. I don't care about your opinion on the show, Can't about us, know. about Warhammer. I just need to know where to buy uh, a chicken. Like an actual uh, chicken, though. Like, not yeah, an actual chicken. chicken. A full yeah. chicken. Yeah. A live chicken. A live chicken. <laughs> you want a chicken? I can get you a chicken. You want a chicken? They're too no expensive problem. to fly with, Val. And I need an emotional it's, support chicken. It is a little awkward in the Maritimes because of the Maritime <laughs> community. But, like, I'm sure I can find you one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Downfooting people. Grim after tactics. 
Uh, there you go. <laughs> which, yeah, there you, which is the name of Danny's new series that, that we'll probably have coming up here in the new year. Uh, before we sign off, Pete, uh, any final words? I really Please feel no. like I need to throw up, but otherwise, thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks for not throwing up during the show. We drank that grape juice and the cough syrup combined. It was a terrible decision. Oh, yeah. Right. No, man, it was a great decision. I don't know. Well, what thank you. Yeah. It got me. Yeah. Got me through the show. Got me through the show. We appreciate you uh, pushing through for this, and yep. like Pete says, check out um, Just Friends with Just uh, Friends. Amy Smart and Absolutely. Ryan Reynolds. Movie. Some fat uh, shaming, but you can get over it. I mean, spoilers. <laughs> They're not just friends, <laughs> but it's it's great. Uh, then after that, check out uh, which was the one where they switched. Where it was like Kate Winslet. Oh, uh, um, thirteen going on thirty. No, no, that was Jennifer Garner, uh, oh, which um, turns into Ben Affleck. Um, oh, the holiday is another wonderful oh, yes, movie. Holiday. Check that one out. Uh, but remember, when your life feels like a never-ending siege, and you've just drank a bunch of grape juice and cough syrup, mm. uh, remember that it's always grim after dark. It's time to step into the grim darkness When nerds gather talking Warhammer madness Grim after dark, the podcast with the host John, Danny and Val, but they're not the most Claiming to be experts, but it's all a facade Talking about battles and dice rolls, they're all odd Trying to sound cool with their Warhammer talk But I'm here to expose, it's all just squawk Nerds, nerds, everywhere I see Talking Warhammer this, like it's a decree But let me tell you, homie, it is all just a game In the real world, homie we are not the same, so put down the dice, step out of the dog. It's time to live life, nerd, make your own mark. Grim as the dog, the nerd's playground, talking Warhammer this, acting all profound. But when I listen, it's all just a bunch of noise. I love roasting nerds and their stupid ass toys. <sighs> stupid ass toys, I want to grab them. Put my hands around the neck, squeeze, squeeze, Warhammer squeeze. Until they can't breathe or breathe again. <laughs> Tell a friend, tell a friend, I'm out here roasting nerds again. <laughs>